Hello, everybody. This is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements, looking at some of the cool tools in the program. Uh, one of my favorite tools in the program is the stabilizer. The stabilizer can certainly save your video if you've got a particularly bumpy or jumpy video. Just smooth out some of the wrinkles in there. We have, for instance, video here shot from the passenger seat of a car. So as we go down the highway, we got lots of bumps, we got lots of jumps, and we'd like to smooth that out. Now I want to show you the stabilizer and how it works at its default settings, and then I want to show you how to use special settings to actually take advantage of it and use it to much better effect. So to use the stabilizer, we're going to select our clip here on the timeline, go to the top right of the toolbar here on the right, and select Adjustments. And there you can see the shake stabilizer. And if we open it up, you see you have quick and detailed. Not sure there's a big difference. Go ahead and select detailed. It just takes a little bit longer, but you're going to get, you know, I think fine results out of either one. But let's go ahead and select detailed. Let it do its stuff. It's going to do shake reduction. Shake reduction, essentially what it does is it finds a spot or two in the middle of your frame. See, it didn't take that long at all. And then it expands the size of your video. In other words, it increases its resolution or increases its size beyond the edge of your video frame and moves the video inside your video frame to keep the point that it's selected at the center. Let me show you the results. So let's go ahead and click on the timeline. I'm going to press the home key, bring that playhead back to the very beginning, and you'll see it's much, much smoother now. Very smooth, no bumps, no jumps, very nice. Now you may notice that it's also just a little bit fuzzier and some of that has to do with the fact that the timeline hasn't been rendered and we could render it by clicking the render button or pressing enter and get a little bit cleaner of a picture. But I also think that the program expands your video a little larger than it needs to in order to accomplish its task. As a matter of fact, we go over here to applied effects and if we toggle open advanced settings here for shake reduction, you see that crop and smooth are set for 50%. The smoothest set at 50%. All of these things have to do with how large the uh, video is within the video frame and then how much the program is moving it around in that video frame. I think 50% is kind of extreme. In fact, I'm gonna just, if you see this little eyeball here next to shake reductions listing, this will temporarily disable and then re-enable the effect. This is before. You can see how far back everything is. This is after the effect's been applied. So you can see the program has expanded this video a lot. And that means a loss of resolution. It means a lack of clarity in the picture. I don't think it needs to have crop and smooth set as high as 50%. I'm going to just drag this down to about 10%. It'll only take a second or so for the program to redo the smoothing, which it did already. Once again, I'm going to toggle on and off. This is before the effect is applied. This is after. Much less expansion, much less blowing out the resolution of the video. And yet, if I click on the timeline here and press the home button and we play that video again, still remarkably smooth. A couple nasty bumps in there, but still very, very smooth. I would encourage you whenever you use this stabilizer to go for the minimum crop and smooth setting. I'm gonna bring it down. Let's bring it down to about 5%, see what happens. 5% might be just a little low, but it'll only take a second or so for the program to redo it. Now you can see before and after hardly any expansion at all, but let's go back to home and play the clip, except for a couple of bumps there, still pretty smooth. I think probably 10% is our sweet spot for this. What I'm encouraging you to do when you use the shake reduction tool is not let it go at its default. Play around with the settings, see what is the minimal crop and smooth you need to do in order to get a nice smooth video. 10% seems to be it for us here in this particular video. Let the program do its thing and you'll get a nice, smooth, stabilized image without losing the resolution. Now, if you want to know more about these kind of tools and these kind of tips and tricks, be sure and check out the tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. If you want to know everything there is to know about Premiere Elements, you'll want to check out the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. It's available on Amazon.com, and I'm the guy who wrote the book. Hope you'll check out the book, and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.